the MTD CNC podcast, sponsored by Langley Alloys. Unique metals for demanding applications, providing first-class performance and an international service. Hello and welcome to the MTD CNC podcast. Today we're recording in Warwick at the home of Walter Ewag UK. Joining me today is Philip Morris, the sales director and general manager for the company, as well as Akim Shuras, the CSO of Walter Ewag. Gents, welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Akim, if we come to you first, just tell us a little bit about the company, please. Yeah, well, Walter Ewag UK was founded in 2004. Um, when we uh, separated from our former owner, the Walter H. E., and uh, we built up uh, our own company here. And uh, yeah, since that time, we, we are having here always a subsidiary and a demo room, uh, service people, service and application support for our customers. So this is the, the date the company here was born. Sure. And if we talk about Europe and, and, f- and further afield, what, what's the size of the company? What's the scale of the company in the group? Uh, yeah, yeah. Worldwide, uh, uh, Walter Ewak, we are roughly 600, 650 people. Uh, in some countries, we have our own subsidiary, like in the United Kingdom. And in some uh, companies, we are together with our uh, colleagues from the group, from the United Grinding Group. Sure. And what, what technologies do you offer? Yeah, the Walter Eva Group is, stands for Tooling, the tool group. Uh, we supply to, to our customers grinding, eroding, and measuring machines. Okay. And Phil, you've been with the company not so many months. What, how, how are you settling in? What do you, what you, how are you finding the business? I'm really enjoying the uh, joining uh, Walter Ewag. Fantastic company, quality machines, and uh, excellent, uh, excellent team. Uh, I've been with Walter Ewag around about uh, eight months now. Um, uh, the, uh, we look after uh, the UK and Ireland. Um, we have many... Um, facets to the business, as uh, Aki mentioned, with uh, grinding, uh, eroding and measuring. Uh, and we also have a, a very uh, healthy uh, service um, uh, uh, department that uh, looks after the machines for uh, maintaining mm. peak performance and also uh, retrofitting as um, uh, new technology comes along to improve the machines. Sure. Like I used to use Walter, uh, Walter grinding machines many, many years ago, I'll say. And you're from a similar background to me, so you must have seen, been exposed to these machines in some of your previous roles. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, in my previous roles uh, with the applications and, and uh, the sales of um, uh, carbide uh, cutting tools, um, I'd always seen that uh, a lot of the uh, premier brands were manufactured on a Walter uh, machine. Um, and then when now when I get up close and see the technology of how they're made, uh, it's closed the loop for me as to um, from a starting point of using a tool and how it's ground and what you can do to that tool to make it perform better on various materials. Absolutely. And we're actually here, uh, this podcast has taken, uh, taken place, like I say, in Warwick at, at your open house. It's the fir- first time I've been here. Well, it's not the first time. First time for some time I've been here with the levels of technology we have, we have downstairs. I'd just like to touch upon that if we can. Uh, how's, how's the week been that, you know, the open house been successful? Yes, it's been a good turnout on day one. Uh, we have two new machines to the UK market, the Mini Plus and the G200. We also have a HeliCheck Advanced here. The, um, the beauty of the machines is they can all talk to each other, networked, and also the, uh, the Mini Plus boasts the new uh, core panel, which uh, would need no more hardware upgrades to, in order to talk to any other machine within the United Grinding Group. Yeah, I just want to touch on the technology. You've, you've mentioned them all there, but if we start with the Helitronic Mini Plus, mm-hmm. um, what, what's different about it? And maybe we come to um, Akim, if we can come to you on this. Um, mm. Where does that fit in the market? What's making it different? Well, first of all, the, the Plus uh, is a combination of three models uh, of the same base, which we had in the past. Uh, and each of these models had some limitations. And we decided last year we, we're going to need to change that to make it easier for our customers and, and that they can select the machine as they, as, as they need it. So we introduced that machine last year, the Plus, and the Plus means you can ha- add to the basic machine every option which you like to have. If this is automation or if this is measuring in the machine, 
the technology of the base, like the linear drives on the C-axis and things like that. So that's, that was the idea behind. And I know we've got a very efficient spindle as well. Yeah, we have the, the A-axis uh, renewed. Uh, this gives the possibility for, uh, for cylindrical grinding. It was also something which uh, was not available, uh, let's say, with the technology that we have right now. And this allowed uh, allow our customers that they can make a complete tool on, on this machine. And, and it's uh, like another level of automation again, isn't it, from Walter, Walter Emac? Yeah. You know, obviously, we talk about automation a lot, but what are the advantages on this particular machine, both in terms of the wheel dressing, the wheel changing, and what, what our class is automation, actual carbide tools themselves? Yeah, well, there, there are a few things on that machine which, which gives him full automation. Is of course, a robot loader who is loading the, the blanks or the tools. But then, as, as you just touched it, uh, the, the, the dressing, which is also important to keep the wheels in, in shape. And the other thing is uh, the, the automatic measuring system on the machine, the IMS, which is measuring during the process and compensating the values. So that means that machine can run for a very long time without an operator. Yeah, and the other thing I, I highlighted on this machine, not just this machine, but across all of your suite of machines, there's a big skills gap here in the UK, and I know it's no different in Europe and further afield. Um, it's very short um, education on these machines. They're so easy to program, aren't they? You don't need to go years and years of education to learn how to use these machines. They're very, very intuitive, very easy to use, easy to program. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, the best example is the calibration of our robot loader because he's doing his calibration by himself. You just have to start a, the calibration program. And when it comes to the software, we have a wizard which allows you immediately to, to generate an ident number. And uh, only if you want to have something special, you, you need to go more in detail into the software. But the wizard is a very big help to start with it. Sure. And it's going to be a good seller for you? Yes, it's a very good selling machine for us, absolutely. And I think the decision we made last year to combine the three models to, to one machine was a very good decision. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a very good introduction, introduction into the machine. Sure. Uh, Phil, if we can come to you, the, um, the G200, that is, that's incredibly small for such a fast, dynamic, robust machine, such a tiny footprint. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, don't be put off by its size. It's, uh, it certainly packs a punch. It's three meters, uh, sorry, 2.3 meters square footprint. So when floor space is, is at a premium. Which it is, everywhere. Which everywhere. Uh, this machine can uh, slot straight in and uh, uh, take up no space at all, really. Um, the beauty of the machine, it, we've got a mineral cast base. It's rigid. It's strong. The rigidity gives... Uh, benefits uh, to to its accuracy to its its consistency of grinding uh, but the best thing with this machine is you can add uh, a top loader uh, automation to the machine but it's not only just a sort of a, a machine that can be considered for regrinds we can now manufacture tools from from one mil to 20 mil and regrind from three mil to a uh, hundred mil the uh, top loader will enable us again, as, as Akin pointed out, with integrated measuring systems to let this machine run uh, unmanned uh, in a small area, taking up no space, but it's so powerful and so strong. Yeah, you'd be forgiven, when you look at the machine, you'd be, you'd be forgiven to think and it's a micro tool machine, wouldn't yeah. you? Maybe three millimeters up to six, eight, maybe 10 yeah. millimeters. But now what you're saying is it's up to 20 mil, so that's going to be probably 95% of the cutting tool market fits on that machine. It is, it is absolutely. Uh, it's not restricted in any way with, uh, with what uh, it can produce. Uh, again, if you wanted to go above uh, 20 mil, then the ideal solution would be to move to the Mini Plus, since we've got a machine to start off with to meet your needs if 20 millimeters is is the uh, the largest tool you want to do for production. Uh, it is a 9 kilowatt motor, so if we look at that, that's powerful enough to do all of the tools that you're looking at um, within the range up to 20 mil. If, you, um, if we sort of transpose the, the formulas for uh, cutting um, uh, producing tools. If you had a, a, a motor that was three, four times the size of that, it's 
it's really a little bit wasted because you, there's only so much force you can put into uh, a carbide before it will snap. So a nine kilowatt motor we've calculated is more than adequate to um, produce uh, all of the tools up to 20 mil. But the other thing is as well is the small area, it's, it's movement is shorter. So cycle times are quicker. Mm -hmm. Cycle times quicker along with the nine kilowatt motor equals less electricity used. I was going to say that. That's got to be a big thing, surely. It, it has to be. And the electric has stabilised slightly, touch wood. I hope it, hopefully it doesn't go back, but it's still horrific for many, many manufacturers. It's got to be a huge advantage. Oh, absolutely. And if we look at some of the, uh, say, one of our older machines are um, in the marketplace, uh, the, say from 94 to 97, we'll buy that machine back because we're passionate about uh, our contribution to making savings within, uh, within a company. We could take that machine back and... Uh, give a good um, discount on a new G200, which then its ongoing savings will pay for itself over a period of time. Yeah, and again, tell us about the, uh, the software on this machine. The software on the machine is the same as a Fanic control. We use Tool Studio. Tool Studio has, um, is, is so uh, easy to use, and we coin the phrase, uh, we can grind what you see. So basically, when you're programming this machine, you will see its movements in 3D, and you can see the position of the tool and the position of the wheel, and that's exactly how it is on the machine. So if you think back to your days of setting up a machine, constantly opening the door to see if the tool is yeah, fouling, in the right place yeah. or failing, you don't need to do that because the you will grind what you see on the software like a digital twin almost absolutely and that once that's there you're confident that you could let this go um you measure off and then produce and then the integrated measuring system software option will uh, will compensate and keep the uh, the size correct Fantastic. And I will say, when you see, and, and there's a video out on the MTDC into YouTube channel, so you should go and look at the size of this machine. It's tiny. You could literally have one in your garage, couldn't you? Mm -hmm. So, but the other thing I want to touch on, um, anyone can make a tool, but we've got to inspect the tool, haven't we? You've got the HeliCheck Advance. And are you, is it fair to say you're unique in that? You can grind the tool and you can authenticate the tool. You can measure the tool um, with, with the HeliCheck. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, yeah, and this is a big, uh, a big, uh, and an important point for Walter. We we started with the measuring technology very early, and uh, we developed it to the to the level where it is right now. And even if you can measure in the machine, you are not measuring every parameter. So you need like a kind of a referee, and this is our HeliCheck series. And we have now, uh, we have the advanced which you see here on the on the open house, but we have a pro and a plus which gives you also pro or a 3D measuring system, a lot of further uh, possibilities to measure a tool. Yeah, it's very important because a number of manufacturers have to inspect a large percentage of their tools. I think we probably know they're going to be correct, but manufacturers and ISO certification, AS9100, things like this, they want 100% inspection on tools. And you want your grinding machines grinding and your inspection in t uh, machines inspecting, surely. Yeah. It, it's, it's almost using, you tying up a grinding machine to inspect a tool if you're doing 100%. Sure, that's a waste of, that's not very productive, right? No. Oh. No, absolutely not. Um, you, you measure on a, on a grinding machine only those parameters which are really important for the process. But for quality insurance, you measure more parameters, which is very often requested by the companies. If you deliver tools to big aerospace companies, uh, they will request a, a protocol for it. And also the measuring machines have the capability of being connected with a robot loader, so you can do 100% mm -hmm. checking also during the night. Sure, and we're looking at uh, ball screws, linear drives, a good solid base, so regardless of the temperature, it, it, sh it yeah. shouldn't move uh, a great deal. The base of the machine is a granite block. It uh, brings uh, big advantages, temperature resistant, uh, vibration doesn't mean nothing to, to the granite. And uh, yeah, it's very stable, very accurate, uh, for sure, in the measuring technology of tools is the most accurate machine. And Phil, in your, your history of looking at cutting tools and things, it seems a daft question, but how, how important is it they're correct? What it says on the tin is, is what it's... 
Oh, it, it goes without saying, if uh, if you can't guarantee the uh, the dimensional accuracy of your tool that's going to a customer, then we could have problems at uh, at the at the end phase where where, where the tools are million. If if they're not right, then you know a bad tool is going to produce a bad job. Sure, certainly on regrinds where maybe we're not grinding a 16 mil tool becomes 15.75 or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's going to become more and more important, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. And again, uh, maintaining that accuracy to a tolerance that the customer requires, then uh, the customer can be confident that um, when they put that data into the machine, they're going to cut and carry on without too much time of uh, resetting. Sure. And th the other point I wanted to touch upon, uh, at MTD CNC, we get, regularly get phone calls saying, I'm starting a CNC machine shop. I've just bought a five axis machine or a multi axis lathe. And in the UK, there's a pro we, we've got about 9,000 in our database. We think there's probably 11 ish thousand, but not many grind shops. Why aren't people starting grind shops? It's, you know, the cost of carbides going through the roof. People are being encouraged more and more to, to regrind tools, of course. So we need service centers for these tools, don't we? So maybe some of these engineers. In, um, being entrepreneurial looking to start a machine shop they should be looking to start a grind shop yes I would agree to take control of your uh, grinding is uh, is uh, uh, it, it's important but it also uh, it is something it's a journey that um, takes time to uh, in order to um, uh, make the uh, the product correct for, for, for the use uh, it's a journey that you need to partner with um, with a good grinding company uh, such as ourselves um, because it's not something that you can learn overnight. As you say, everybody would be able to do it. But with regards to a Walter machine, if it's ease of use, would definitely give you that um, edge in order to uh, to break into that uh, regrind, uh, reshot market. Yes, definitely. For sure. Well, gents, appreciate your time today. Appreciate the invite to the open house. It's been uh, well attended, like you say. I think there's going to be some... Um, there's going to be some new, new new customers downstairs, so it should be a prosperous week for you both as well. Thank you for your time, and we'll see you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, more importantly, for all you listeners at home, thank you for listening, and we'll see you soon. Thank you for listening to this episode of the MTD CNC podcast, sponsored by Langley Alloys, specialists in a wide range of exotic materials for any application for all your engineering needs.